Welcome back. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about what's on this breadboard, but then I realized I have to go a bit back in time and talk about something else first. So you kind of have an idea why all this is here on a breadboard. So the reason for that mess on a breadboard is this. This is a breakout board I designed for the ATtiny 3217 or 3217 or 3217 but I believe it's 3217 and I'll explain why in a minute. Now the reason I designed this breadboard is because the new Tiny AVR 0 and 1 series only come in a QFN package or a SOIC package one of these. Now these can be soldered by hand on a breakout board but these are quite difficult to do by hand so I designed a breakout board for them and then I thought well maybe I'm not the only one who is interested in having a play with them. I made up a few boards um, because this is a panelized board and if I would just order five of these boards it costs just as much as ordering 12 times 5 60 boards and now I have 60 boards well a bit less because I made a few that I think I'm just gonna put up on Tindy pre-solder the tiny QFM package on there and I also put on some filtering caps and an LED so you could for example upload a blink sketch. So a quick introduction to the ATtiny 3217 or I should actually say the Tiny AVR 0 and 1 series and this is also the reason why I think it's 3217 and not 3217 or 3217 and that's because how the chip name is formed. Of course the word AD tiny means it's a tiny AVR. Then there's the first two digits which indicate how much flash it has. So 2 for 2K, 4 for 4K, etc. up to 32 for 32K. Then the third digit from the left indicates which series it is. Is it the 0 series or the 1 series? And there is a difference between the 0 and the 1 series. And it's mainly in the peripherals. The 0 series only has some basic peripherals. And the 1 series has some extra peripherals. Including a touch controller and a digital to analog converter. And the fourth number from the left is how many pins it has. If there's a 2 over there it has 8 pins as you can see here 8 pins and it's a SOIC and has 5 IO lines. 4 at the end means 14 pins SOIC with 11 IO lines. A 6 means it's a 20 pin package which is available as a SOIC and as a QFN with 17 IO lines and the 7 means 24 pins QFN with 21 IO lines. Now the chips are kind of arranged in this matrix starting at the bottom left the ATtiny 202 and that has 2k of flash and 128 bytes of RAM all the way up to the top right which is a 24 pin QFN package with 32 kilobytes of flash and 2k of RAM. Now when coming across the Tiny AVR 0 and 1 series I immediately went for the top of the line ATtiny 3217 and that's because the ATtiny 3217 is very similar to the Admega 328p and that chip is on for example this nano 
but it's also on the Arduino Uno, and we all came to appreciate. Now a quick look at the datasheet of the ATtiny 3217 gives us some features. First of all, it's the AVR CPU. It's running at 20 megahertz. It has 32 kilobytes of flash memory, 256 bytes of EEPROM, and 2 kilobytes of RAM. It has UART, it has SPI, it has I2C, and it also runs at multiple voltages starting from 1.8 volts up to 5.5 volts. And this is quite similar to the Atmega 328P datasheet, also 20 megahertz. In this case it also has 32 kilobytes of flash. It has one kilobyte of EEPROM, which is a bit less than the maximum you can get on an AT Tiny, which is 256 bytes. But then again, the RAM is also 2 kilobytes. And also the 328P also has UART, SPI and I2C. So these chips are very similar, but there are two big differences. First of all, this one is available in a tip package. And that's very convenient because that means you can plug this into a breadboard and start building your project. This comes in a QFN. Are you going to focus? Thank you. QFN 24 package, which is tiny. And also, this QFN has no leads, so you can't really tell whether you're solving this correctly when you look at it from above. So that's why I designed this breakout board and also a stencil so I could paste the board up, put the chips on and I'm just doing it with a, a hot air gun and make myself a few of these which will easily fit into a breadboard. Now one other advantage of this ATtiny 3217 is the price and for that I'm going to use a bit of a bigger writing tool. At the time of shooting this video the Atmega will cost you in US dollars two dollars and eight cents. The ATtiny 3217 again at the moment of filming this will cost you in US dollars 0 0.98 cents. The thing is, although this is quite widely available on all kinds of sellers, this is not really. You have to go to the bigger sellers like Mauser, Digikey, Farnell, and they all have a minimum order amount of $50. So you would have to buy 50 of these chips. First of all, you're stuck with 50 chips. If you're only going to use one, you're stuck with 49. But then also you need some breakout boards. So my plan was, or still is actually, to pre-make these with all the components on there, including the smoothing caps and the LED, and sell them on Tindy for, I don't know, a few dollars. I don't really have to make a profit. I just think it would be fun if more people started experimenting with the ATtiny 3217 and I'm really curious to see what projects people will come up with. Back to the breadboard. On here is a way to program this. Now you don't need this. I made this for myself because it's 
an easy way to program them and if I make multiple boards I just want to upload a program to see whether the chip actually is soldered correctly and for example upload some kind of test program. Now the way you program this chip is not done the way we're used to, namely using MISO, MOSI, etc. It is done through UPDI, which is a one wire interface. And this requires only three wires VCC, ground, and the communication wire. Before Spence Conde came along, you had to use the Atmel ICE programmer to program these chips. But Spence Conde released a mega tiny core which makes it possible to program these chips using the Arduino IDE. Also, El Tangas, he released a UDPI programmer software to program the new ATtiny series using an Atmega 328P. And that's this. Now you could use this. This is a Nano, but you could use an Uno or any other quote unquote Arduino, which has the Atmega 328P on it. You would just need an extra resistor and that's it. Now for my convenience, I made this. And this is nothing really special. It's the Atmega 328P chip. And because I didn't have a dip package, I used the QFN package, which I then had to painstakingly solder individual wires to, to convert it to something I can use in a breadboard. But this is just a prototype. You need the crystal, you need two capacitors, and that's it. Now to communicate with the Atmega 328P, I'm using the FTDI, FT231. And that's a USB to serial chip. Only a few other external components required. A few resistors, capacitors, these LEDs aren't even necessary, but it's nice to get some visual feedback. On the bottom, there's also a few resistors. And this is all I need to program these breakout boards. Where are they? I simply put it in, close the thing, it's in there, upload the program, and I'm done. Now this might be a bit of a chaotic video, and that's because I'm trying to explain what I've done the past few months in a video of which I'm hoping it won't be over 10 minutes. But if you want to join me in having some fun with the ATtiny 0 and 1 series, and especially the ATtiny 3217, let me know in the comments below. I'm hoping to put these up on Tindy as soon as possible, and I hope together we can have some fun with them. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell to get an instant notification when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.